If you look at OnLive, for example, they have three data centers, so they're trying to serve the entire United States from three data centers. Because no one has this data, they, can't, they don't know that that's impossible. It's actually totally impossible. It's crazy. Um, we have 10 data centers here alive right now in the United States. So Gaikai has the closest, fastest network in the world, period, for serving video games. But we're launching with 15, and I'm going to go to 50. That's my goal for the United States. And that's how we get really close to the users and get the latency out of the system. The company that, that um, invested into us is a company called um, Triple Point Capital. They bought the servers for YouTube and Facebook. Intel just invested into the company too, so we have you know, a major, major chip company and a major um, um, purchaser of servers. The, the next um, problem we had is where to put the servers and how to get the fastest connections to the users. So, triple, or, so there's another company, Limelight Networks, has invested into us. And they're a major CDN, just like Akamai. And Limelight are giving us um, all of their peering agreements. So effectively, it's years and years of legal work just handed to me on a plate. And this is all done. So these are Limelight data centers we're, we're in right now, using servers from Triple Point Capital. Um, we've done all that, that work already. We've turned on our first data center in Europe. This is Amsterdam. It turns out that, that Amsterdam and Europe is just wired differently um, when compared to the United States. So we're going to need a lot less data centers. In about 60 days, you're going to see we'll have covered the, all the servers are ordered now. They're actually being built for this. We will have the whole of Europe completely green. Worldwide, the next um, data centers um, I've got on order are Seoul in Korea, um, Tokyo in Japan, three different locations in, in, in uh, Australia and Shanghai in China. So you'll see us starting to go into Asia. So what, what actually happens here is there's no change to the website at all. There's just some hidden code that's checking to see if there's a Gaikai server nearby. If there is a server nearby, you get a chance to play. If there isn't, it tells us, for God's sake, buy more servers in that area of the country. <laughs> it's, and it's a very easy discussion with our investors. People keep hitting the pages, and we need to buy some more servers. So this is what happens. A pop-up appears. The pop-up, the creative for the pop-up, it's Flash, so um, any of your agencies can easily create the most unbelievably sexy button appearances, you know, with videos and trailers, and if you were to click this, this is what your experience would be. I'm using StarCraft II as an example because this is one of the games that um, we've been experimenting with, and it's, it's a perfect example of how we don't want to work with, um, with products because the first thing that happened when I clicked is I get asked to log in through Battle.net, Again, if I want to go really wide, I'm not trying to get anyone that's ever worked with Blizzard before. I want to introduce all of all those other people who have heard the word, you know, World of Warcraft or StarCraft or whatever. So we have to get rid of those registration boxes. In reality, if you force people to register, you get crappy email addresses anyway. They have those 30-minute email addresses or they, make, uh, they, make, they, they give you the spam email address. So... What we want you to do instead is to, is to let the player play, create, a, create a, an ID for them, so you know, you're, you're automatically generating an account, let them start playing with that, with that ID, save everything to that ID, they didn't have to register then, and, and when something positive happens, like they just leveled up, or they completed level one, or you just give them some kind of badge or achievement or something good, then say to them, would you like to save your progress? And all you need is an email address, and we can handle all of that for you. But, but the point being that making it so that it's completely frictionless for the user, and, and then when they know there's something to be lost, asking them would like, they like to save it, this is all something that gamers understand. They get that. And when you ask them, would you like to save your progress, they're more likely to give you a real email address because they do want to hold on to that stuff. Steam is the number one digital download solution today for video games. This is, this is the front door to our industry for a lot of digital players, and this is how we go about engaging them. Um, I, I saw Chris Taylor at a, at a conference, uh, it was DICE I saw him at, and, and he, he was talking about Supreme Commander 2, and I'd never played the game, and I was like, Chris, I'll check it out. So I went home and I fired up Steam, and I'm like, I'd like to play the demo of Supreme Commander 2, please. So I click on it, and the first thing I get is a security warning saying, you know, I, they want to save some file to my hard drive. Okay, fine. So I, I do that. It's an installer. Okay, I run, I run that. I got some text I need to read. So I read that. And then I got a legal agreement that I have to agree to. I'm like, I just want to check out Chris's game, please. Um, all right. 
And then it's asking me technical information about my connection, which they could have auto-sensed. I don't know, because I'm mass market. I have no clue what you're talking about here. Um, and then it's asking me what language I'd like. Way too late, because I just did my legal agreement in English, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell is that all about? Um, and then, uh, and then I've, I've got to save stuff somewhere on my hard drive. I'm going to install that. And I'm done, right? Because there's a finish button there. So I click the no, no. They downloaded an old version of Steam, and I have to sit and patch it now. Why? Why not just give me the new version? So now I'm going to sit and patch Steam. And now it wants me to create an account. I don't want an account. I just want to check out the game. But they insist, so they give me another legal agreement. Um, so I go through that. Then I have a form to fill out. I have another form to fill out. I have another form to fill out. And finally, it's setting up my account on Steam, which I don't want. And it's asking me to print it out so I don't forget about it. Um, and then it installs stuff on my taskbar that I don't want either. And then they forgot that I clicked Supreme Commander. So they were so busy taking care of themselves and getting me to install their software, they just didn't even remember what I clicked at the start. So I have to find it now. So I go poking around the store, and I find Supreme Commander 2. And here they have some really, really horrible text that, again, it makes sense to us because we're gamers, but to the mass market asking me if I have Pixel Shader 3 available on my computer is just <laughs> dumb. And it's stuff that you can sense. So they can sense it and say, sorry, you can't run this game. Um, but you know, I go ahead with that. And then I'm being told my bit rate, which, I, again, I don't understand any of this. It's, it's asking me about UI changes. I have to prepare to download. OK, I'm prepared. Um, I've been prepared for a while now. And now it's finally downloading. Um, and now, you know what? We haven't actually downloaded it yet. Now I have to, it was preparing to download. Now I have to download it. So I'm going to sit there through that whole download process um, and wait for that number to hit 100%. And then I'm, I'm, it says 100% ready. So good, we're finally there. No, it's going to go and check DirectX to see if that's OK. And, um, and then it sends me an email, which I have to go and load up my email outlook, which takes forever, and go confirm their email. This is the process to get Chris's game running on Steam. And, and it's funny, because when I talk to publishers about this, they're like, yeah, but this, this is, you know, we use Steam, and we think it's awesome, because you know, once you've gone through all of that pain, the friction's really good after, because it's easy to buy games. And the reality is, I get that. That makes sense. But, but this, this is the problem. You've just limited the, the, uh, the amount of people that will ever experience your software. You just, you're done. The, you've just put the most ridiculous wall in front of the mass market before you even get started here. So it's not just Steam. So I'm not being mean to Gabe. Gabe's a friend. Um, I'm just showing you where the game industry is at. If you go try uh, World of Warcraft, you'll have exactly the same experience. 35 clicks, two security warnings, and three legal documents, and a whole bunch of time just to get the game running. So to try to get rid of this, this is why we've built a company specifically to solve this problem. And the first thing I did was I went to Adobe and said, would you modify Flash to make this possible? And Adobe, of course, just said, you, you've got to be kidding, right? You know, you're a startup. We're not modifying Flash for you. So what we did is we hacked Flash and demonstrated, a, um, we, we demonstrated a, a Adobe Photoshop loading with a single click. And they were like, oh my god, do you realize how difficult it is to get people to, to download and register and install Photoshop? You know, this is incredible. So then they supported us. And they spent the last year <laughs> Um, modifying Flash for us to support our technology. Java, Flash is one click, Java is two clicks. Um, we're also on iPhone, iPad, Android. We're, we're working on digital TV right now, set-top boxes, and consoles. The goal that we have is to be completely ubiquitous. Again, that's compatible with what gamers want. They discover it wherever they are, whatever they're doing, on whatever device. So if my friends are playing right now, I need to be able, and I've got an iPad in front of me, I need to be able to join into that game. This was a demonstration that I did at E3 that I think really the penny suddenly dropped for people. This is World of Warcraft running inside Facebook. World of Warcraft, this is the 14 gig version. Burning Crusade, Wrath of Lich King, 14 gigs of game, and it loads faster than Farmville. And the reason is Farmville has to download something. We don't, we just connect you to a video signal. And so now you're playing. So we demonstrated playing World of Warcraft in Facebook versus Xbox. And, and when you're playing World of Warcraft on two different devices that don't even have it, 
um, then you start to see the potential here. At our office, we do Facebook versus Xbox versus iPad of World of Warcraft, all playing together, and they can play instantly. And that's, that's really the power of this um, streaming technology. The wall between video game marketers and consumers has crumbled.